All right, guys, what's up? Um, back here on the plasma table build, I have been like honestly pulling my hair out with all this wiring stuff. It's been really, really difficult for me. It's tough for me to show you guys stuff that I don't really understand that well. Um, the metal fabrication was really easy to share with you guys because um, that's something I already know how to do really well and I can almost do it in autopilot. But this machine building and wiring of the switches and the different components in the CNC system is all 100% brand new to me. I was filming and most of my videos were just me redoing stuff that I already did before. It just turned into such a mess that it was impossible for me to make a cohesive video and actually teach you guys anything because I'm literally learning it right now for the first time and the videos would just end up like hours long and probably as frustrating for you as it was for me. Uh, it may just be like a montage of me saying fuck over and over again because that's basically what it's been like out here for the last, uh, it's been a couple weeks wiring this thing up and working on all those kinks. But what I can share with you guys is where the table's at right now and what it does, what it doesn't do and where I'm at right now. What I can tell you guys about the electronics is, about the electronics is it's hard, okay? Um, I've had people that built these tables say, oh yeah, you know, it's no big deal, just you know, plug it all in, wah, 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 wah. Uh, that's not me, it wasn't easy for me, uh, but it is doable, you know what I mean? That's, that's really the message that I want to get through on this video is that you can do it. It's not going to be easy, it's not going to be like ordering a fucking Big Mac, but it's all doable stuff, you know? It's all really simple principles, you know, switches, wiring, testing soldering, how to make different styles of electrical connections. Uh, it's all new, but none of, it's, none of it's impossible, you know what I mean? We're not making uh, rocket appliances here. We are making a CNC plasma table that has been you know, done for 30 years or 40 years, or however long the technology's been around. What's really surprised me is like old timers, dude, like old cats know all about CNC. Somehow, I don't know if it was in high school shop classes, or just being around in manufacturing, working in industry for the last, you know, few decades. I talk to people my age, and they have no fucking idea what CNC is, or what it does, or how it works, or um, that it even runs on basically just algebra that we all learned in high school. Um, and it's, it's a lot simpler than it looks. It's basically, it's complicated, it does complicated things, because it's a lot of simple things, all working at the same time, in concert with each other. That's really what's complicated about it. Well, aside from getting power to the table, it's only about like 12 cables or so that run this whole machine and all the communication between all the components. So I've got four motors, one desktop computer, one um, driver unit, plasma cutter, torch height control, RS-485 hub, ohmic sensing unit, there's something on the ground, PWM module. You know, so basically it's like 12 things that you need to hook up. And thinking about it that way is probably more, uh, seems more attainable, more achievable than thinking of it as, you know, this whole plasma table. So if you guys want to do one of these plasma tables, um, my only recommendation is just have a little bit of patience. You know, I took time off work to do this. I've really just been focusing on this project right here for the last two weeks and uh, knocked out basically all the wiring. Right now, I've got everything hooked up and I'm ready to test. Um, except for the last two little things I'm going to show you guys right now. So as far as buttoning this thing up, let me show you guys where I'm at. Got the table all hooked up here. I've got my hardware rack with the uh, controller and the desktop computer right there. I moved the shelf from right here out to this corner just to put a little bit of space in between these, hopefully to prevent some interference. Everything has power to it now and everything is connected to each other. Uh, so the last thing that I'm dealing with here is Apparently, plasma uses a uh, high frequency start, I believe, a lot like, uh, it must be similar to uh, like aluminum welding for a non-contact start. That produces a lot of interference that can fuck with the computers and all that, sitting right over there in that little corner. So some guys on YouTube were kind enough to tell me uh, what they did with their tables and kind of some problems, hopefully before I run into them. Um, and basically what they recommended is I need to ground the table and the plasma cutter out to a grounding rod. So we're gonna go ahead and drive this into the ground. And also, I needed to get something called an uninterruptible power supply 
uh, for the other electronics, and I don't understand how this works, but I'm trusting them that they weren't bullshitting me and really genuinely trying to help me out, so I bought this, uh, I think it was like 45 bucks, somewhere in there, and uh, basically it has a battery backup on it, so I'm guessing it does something where it's actually running off the battery instead of your house power, um, so it isolates the electrical signal, you know, not not 100% sure, but uh, it's got a $75,000 equipment guarantee on it, um, which probably means nothing, <laughs> just like all the other guarantees we get these days. I'm going to hook this up, drive this ground rod in, see if we can uh, get the machine to run today. Yeah, that almost took all 12 inches to get through this concrete, so I don't know what they did with this pad, but it's a little overkill in this corner, at the very least. Fuck that! Glad that's done. Now that we got the sucker in, it's time to, uh, Actually attached to the table. Got one of the little these little chingasos right here. Tighten it down. And I think we're in business. And all I did here is I just had some leftover 10 gauge, which means it's good for 30 amps. No idea what that means as far as grounding capabilities, but definitely better than what I have now, which is a whole lot of nothing. 